friends welcome back to coffee with ravi this is our continuation of the last talk that we did i hope you had an understanding of how the colon moves and what constipation could be constipation is defined usually from a patient's perception as difficulty with bowel movements that include hard stool and difficulty with the act of defecation in other words not only is it hard stool but the when we sit down to poop the stool is having a hard time coming out so that's what i mean by act of defecation or patients tell me that it's a sense of incomplete evacuation in during the rest of the talk i will share with you how gastroenterologists process this information and try to kind of organize this information that's coming from the patients into their own minds using a a a, a a criteria called rome four criteria uh but that's more technical but really constipation is the patient's perception or your perception of having a difficult time with the act of defecation or with the uh, feeling of uh, evacuation so because patients and you uh, when we talk about it can mean different things what we are trying to do is take this conversation that we are having with you and trying to scientifically fit it into this criteria called rome criteria and as gastroenterologists what we are trying to do is try to see if first of all what's the difficulty uh 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 with defecation or pooping that the patient is having some of the criteria that we use on this rome criteria include is there straining in at least a quarter of the times that you one tries to poop is the stool lumpy or hard for greater than 25% is there a sense that after pooping that there's a sense of incomplete evacuation is there a sense of blockage right at the anus sometimes patients tell us that they feel a sense of blockage right there there are sometimes that patients have to resort to digital uh, evacuation in other words using fingers or pressure at the bottom to get the stool out is there a sense of that that would fit the criteria and of course we need to make sure that there's no alarm signals you know there's no blood there's no bleeding there's no pain none of the, there can be some pain and discomfort associated with it but we need to kind of try to make sure that is it this and with this in mind then what we do is that we try to fit you into one of those three buckets one is is the colon moving okay but is there still a sensation of incomplete emptying which is called normal transit constipation sometimes there is slow transit and this is the most common group where the colon is moving very slowly why that happens etc we'll dig into it and there are some causes that we need to make sure and I'll run through them after this slide but is the colon moving real slow or is it a problem right at the act of defecation in other words that flap type mechanism where which i showed you when we sit to poop that angle that i showed you in that slide has to straighten the sphincter has to open is it a problem with that mechanism so we try to kind of sort through these three mechanisms uh um uh as to what the problem could be there are some fixes for all of this and i'll cover that in a separate talk but before we get there we also need to make sure that there are no second what i call secondary causes of constipation sometimes the the anal opening because of previous fistulae or childbirth or uh, tears can get stenosed so it's called anal stenosis cancer can be a cause there can be something pressing from the outside on the colon they can be scar tissue medications are very common um sometimes even uh, uh, tablets like acetaminophen or tylenol greater than 7 tablets antacids if you're taking medications such as verapamil which is a calcium used for high blood pressure uh, uh medications uh, that are pain medications um sometimes uh, cancer treatments uh, sometimes drugs that are given for epilepsy there's a few drugs that all of these can slow down the uh, movement of the colon there are two other causes on the next slide that i want to touch on which is 
when your body metabolism and your hormonal system goes out of whack, such as thyroid problems, if your calcium levels are high, uh, you know, in pregnancy, in uh, low, uh, there are your blood potassium is low. We see that more in the hospital side of it. So anything that goes out of whack in the blood or in the hormonal system can slow the colon down is the short of that. Lastly, there are certain neurological conditions, you know, such as Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, uh, stroke, etc., which can slow the movement of the gut down and also impact the neurological mechanisms that are involved in that act of pooping that we talked about. All of these can cause chronic constipation. So in summary, the colon is a interesting organ in the sense that it helps in storing feces, it helps in breaking down, helping the bacteria actually break down uh, uh, to a product called fatty acids and it helps the health of the colon and helps the health of the body. However, if it starts moving slow or if there are any of these under underlying conditions, we start experiencing chronic constipation, which we had, I'm defining through this criteria, but anything from a patient standpoint that feels like difficulty with the act of pooping or that the act of defecation or stooling is less common or hard or difficult in some way, that fits into that. Uh, so if, if any of these ring a bell, think about it uh, uh, and we'll talk about uh, uh, what, what are the fixes to that, what's the approach to that, uh, um, uh, perhaps even uh, uh, next week, uh, in the next session, in, the, uh, in two weeks from now rather. And uh, if you have any questions, contact your healthcare provider, call us uh, and uh, we'll keep talking. Thank you all again for the constant encouragement I get from all of you that you're getting something out of these discussions, that you're applying this and you're thinking about it and you're empowering yourself. And that makes me glad in my heart because that is the intent is to empower you about your own health uh, so that you can understand and help manage it better along with yourself, along with your healthcare provider. Thank you and we'll see you in two weeks.